is Margaret Lee, Special People in Places. I'm in Nauvoo today at the Depot Museum. My guest today is Terrell Manasco of 78 Magazine. We're going to tour the museum. This beautiful mural here, we are so, so happy to have this. A local artist, Shirley Tidwell, beautiful woman, worked so hard on this mural and um, Pat and Helen Morrison said this was the best thing in the museum. We were so fortunate to have a local artist and she did a fantastic job of doing the local um, landmarks and of course it's the artist eye but she got everything in. Our landmark that we're so proud that it still exists is uh, the Harbin Hotel. The Harbin family built that in 1923. The building at the corner, the Hyde family built that for a grocery. Bart Howard started out with a store right there. The building is very loaded and the women were so proud when they gained the right to vote. The name of the first female voter at Nauvoo for the 1920 election was Belle Martin. She arrived at the polling place an hour before the poll opened to make sure she was the first woman voter at Nauvoo. Right. That uh, block building on the corner that's still standing, he built this um, Mark Howard's um, general merchandise store. But it was hit by fire and he moved on to Haleyville. It was actually a dealership and I think it could be the first dealership in Walker County. It was a sub dealership out of um, Birmingham. But Ford cars, wagons, and buggies. And he even had a service garage, a sawmill. It's just a treasure. Our wonderful Dr. Sankey that came to town in 1903, we had some excitement in Nauvoo in 1940. And that was the birth of the quads, the short quadruplets. This family had... Um, Born right here at Nauvoo, just up going towards land. But um, Dr. Sankey, those babies were born at night. 19. They already had um, children when they had this set of quads. Now remember, this is before uh, fertility. Uh, they were born in the middle of the night in winter, January 1940. And these four babies, uh, Dr. Sankey kept them alive until he could get them to the hospital in Jasper. They just, uh, of course, the town had national publicity and made Dr. Sankey famous for a while. And I remember um, the Slaughter's daughter said she walked into the store and there, it was just a buzz with all the excitement. And she said, what's going on? And Dr. Sankey said, oh, my dear, haven't you heard? Uh, the shorts have four babies. And she said, well, I know they have a lot of children. He said, no, no, no. They, Mrs. Short just gave birth to four babies. So it was all this excitement was going on. Everybody rallied around that family. And uh, they uh, bought property and built a house for them in town. And they had a lot of national endorsements for milk and what have you. But unfortunately, the lowest birth weight baby was Little Hope, and she didn't make it. So um, then it was triplets, and then all those nice um, things that were happening didn't happen. But the people from Nauvoo rallied around them and built them a new home. He was a our local photographer, and so a lot of these photos, he's pictured here inside um, that car, inside his store, and because of him being a photographer, we have so many photos that he's responsible for. 1914, that will show all, 
and uh, he was able to capture that. A lot of photos. The little library, uh, just a little one room. Um, it's all due to having this Sumner in transportation town. history because we exist because of the railroad coming through. That's why the town sprung up here. And then um, Dr. Sankey's uh, grandson became a pilot with Eastern Airlines, and I was a flight attendant with Eastern and actually got to fly with him once. I looked down at my crew list, and I saw the name Sankey, and I had never seen it anywhere else. And so I asked him, I said, by chance, are you, do you have relatives in Nauvoo, Alabama? And he could not believe it. But this is the grandson of Dr. Howard J. Sankey. And, uh, well, uh, Charles, uh, his name is Charles Howard Sankey. Exciting, exciting. And, um, and I'm afraid someone's here. But um, I wanted to mention him, too. Dr. Sankey, with all that publicity, one of the most famous um, newspaper men in the country was Ernie Pyle. And he came to Nauvoo to interview Dr. Sankey. And he was renting a car down at Hamilton Motors, and this wonderful photo exists of him. And, um, and Mrs. Sankey said she remembers Ernie Pyle coming out to Nauvoo. He drove out, so he rented the car down at Hamilton Motors. And this building now is Economy Club. She remembered well him coming out. Yeah, he was killed in the Pacific Theater in April of 1945. And Ernie Pyle is, is buried in Punch Bowl Cemetery in Honolulu, I believe. He went on a tour once, and they mentioned the famous Pyle was buried there. And I jumped out of my seat. I was so excited. But his final resting place is in Hawaii. I tried to show that this is daily life, you know, the churches and uh, the conversations, and has fallen. But I really enjoy um, Hood's Chapel Church of God. It was out in the, um, they call it the Slick Lizard Community, Number Two Hill. And um, so many of, you know, my cousins are on here. And I'm sitting on my grandmother's lap. And, um, and this little boy uh, right here is Gene McDaniel. So we were in the same church group, um, Midway Church, um, Old Union Church, where Nauvoo first started in the Old Bethel area. Old Union, and this this I love Mill Creek, uh, the 1949 baptizing at Mill Creek, and the gentleman being baptized is Early McDaniel's father. So this is a real treasure. Uh, this was now the rural school built in. This was the inside of Nauvoo Rural School. I thought this was just great. It must have been around, um, I'm thinking that was Christmas cards or some of their artwork around Christmas in there, you know, on the wall. And uh, this little boy has some greenery on. So I'm thinking it was Christmas time, maybe. There's a stock. This was the first school, Black Creek Company School, 1900. One room school for the employees' children, located on the site of the future William Cook House. The goat in the foreground, we have to talk about him, belonged to the Whitfields. John Cook, with the hat on, is in the doorway of the school. That's John Cook, the Cook's son, eldest son. Now, that was the first school. Now, um, here is Nauvoo School, is Nauvoo School, and, and 
This is a great photo because it's Nauvoo Brass Band. And that drum that says Nauvoo Brass Band, someone found that in an antique store and brought it. It's in the hotel. So that was a treasure they found, Nauvoo Brass Band. This is a great one. This is Nauvoo School, built in 1921, and this has to be one of the first photos of this school. And you'll notice um, it was reprinted from a newspaper picture, and so that's why it's not a good image. But it's fun to see the cars next to the school. This one makes it really fun. And so uh, the one on the wall up there is uh, later, of course, but I love this because of the old photos, of the old cars. All right. Um, over in the mural, uh, Shirley Tidwell's beautiful mural of the, um, the town, it depicts um, Mark Howard's store, Mercantile Store, again, one of the largest in North Alabama, and uh, sitting in that car and it says right up on his building Ford cars wagons and buggies and so he sold everything from caskets to automobiles and I want to think that it was the first dealership in Walker County uh, people used to come in he had um, a guest house for uh, farmers travel a distance to spend the night they could stay overnight because it was quite a chore. Uh, you can imagine if you had an oxen or horse-drawn wagon, it took a long time to make it to town. This was his second building. He really expanded and had quite the business here, as you can see. And um, I, I think it's fallen, but um, in 1916, here it says, Nauvoo Garage Ford, Bart Coward's Ford Dealership Service Garage, built in 1916. Mm -hmm. I was able to get these from Bart Coward's daughters. Carbon Hill Depot, 1890s. And it's so nice that we have an original depot bench out of that, out of this. Here, the Southern Railroad, uh, this is Roy Harper here, that was 1946. Right um, on the other side of the tracks and on the highway, there were um, like section houses that the men of the United States crew here. This is in 1946. That's 68, much later. But you can tell that is a really old one. The one mile to the station's poster. Let's see. Marshall Northcutt sitting by rail line, one mile. A courtesy of Slate Northcutt. And, um, one of my cousins, and she married Northcutt, Erlene McDaniel's cousin. But, uh, you never know when you might find a photo of one of your ancestors in here. We do have trouble with some of our photos fading. This was, this is a drawing of Land Depot, 1947. Is Sybil Gibson, Naomi Northcutt, and Ben Holland on top. Uh, our, this is courtesy of Sybil Keaton. We love this because it was the old uh, water tower that was um, down on the creek here. Children love playing on Nauvoo's water tank. And these are all cousins, Sybil Keaton's cousins. Sybil Gibson on the Southern Railroad. And of course, they were bought by Norfolk. So Norfolk they rented us 
the plot of land here where the old depot was situated uh, for us to rebuild the depot. When, um, when there is an existing building, you can get funds to help you in restoration. But if it's new construction, there's just no way anyone will donate money for a new structure, even though it's a reproduction. Uh, Jean retired from the Board of Education in 1990. A career in coal mining began in 1954, and Jean has been honored with 50-year membership pin by the United Mine Workers of America. All dressed up. You don't usually see him like that. You usually see him in work clothes. And, um, he, and that says it all. Backbone of um, the whole project here of rebuilding the depot. And of course, he and Erlene um, just saved the Harbin Hotel. Our son, um, Michael Lee, was, um, of course, an amateur artist. And he did this painting for me in 19, 1989. And uh, Ruth Baker did this nice article. Um, this is our son, Michael Lee. He did the painting for me. And in Marietta, Georgia at that time was Lonnie McNutt. And he was um, worked here as um, Lonnie McNutt. And his entire career, it evolved to Norfolk We Southern. did not really have to uh, do plans for this uh, depot, the reproduction. Mitchell built this. This is a replica of the original depot. This is Clyde Allen that was the um, station agent or station manager, I guess we would say. and. This little fixture right here, this light fixture, Mitchell found one. Mitchell found one exactly like that. So people coming in here, when I tell them this is a replica of the they find it hard to believe because of um, Mitchell McDaniel's attention to detail. But he found one, one of those light switches just like that. And this is Clyde Allen, and of course, um, he was the father of Nelson Allen. It became a judge in Jasper, and then his wife, Liz, was appointed after his death. And he is the grandfather of Nelson Allen, Jr., attorney in Jasper. So, I think Clyde would have been very proud of his offspring. Let's see, Northern Alabama, see that was the railway. Northern Alabama became Norfolk Southern. I forgot Northern part. A uniform straight bill of laden. Um, this is something that um, Jasper in 1938. Her maiden aunt was a teacher at Lynn School and um, was a sister of Miss W.S. Knowles, Nauvoo. And what did she have? She had cement. Cement and lime were shipped to her. We are so fortunate that uh, people have just donated so many things to the museum. And this is a bill of laden, a bill for uh, a ship. And we were proud to get this. Charlie and Yvonne went to the trouble of having this frame nicely for us with a plaque, um, equipment that was actually used in the depot here. Uh, Dr. Sankey's son, Ben, became a major league ball player with the Pittsburgh Pirates. And so um, I impressed my husband when I had mail from the Pittsburgh Pirates. <laughs> Who would have thought it? Major league ball player played for the Pittsburgh Pirates, and then played some time for Montreal. And when he came back um, in the summers, and I, they finally built a house here and lived here for a time, 
And the local teachers were so impressed because his children spoke French. Right here are local people that we're mighty proud of. Uh, Peggy German, Jimmy, Jimmy Clowers, and her husband, Jesse German, and Al Alvin Beasley, Bobby Hill and Ben Nix, uh, Slim O'Mary, a good friend of my uncle's, and um, we lived for many years. Seeing him in Michigan, old Nauvoo friends, but when he was in the military, he met the famous Mel Tillis, and um, they played in Okinawa uh, at the Stateside Club, and they called them the state siders and um, that was Mel Tillis in 1952 and our friend Slim O'Leary. They had a reunion in Branson, Missouri in 1996 and, um, and they were all living in 1996. Mel, you know, he had his own uh, place out there and um, was the last remaining member of the band and he passed away in two the last surviving member of the uh, state signers and they played in Okinawa met there and a male is just was just a fantastic talent and entertainer and uh, and Slim was fortunate enough to play with them. Uh, Slim, uh, it was interesting to me because Grady Townsend taught Slim O'Mary how to play guitar. We were able to videotape Mel Tillis and uh, that you can find that program on um, if you pull up Mel Tillis. <laughs> we have such wonderful. Real slow like the, you be called him Alabama. <laughs> we are incredibly proud of these men that served our country, and um, and they were um, they hate having all these photos of him uh, of themselves in here. They said all the men that served, but you we don't have the space to put up a. A picture of every one of our service men that we are so proud of, but Nauvoo men have always served the country well. But in um, we have four colonels out of this little small town. Three of them were born in 1927, and that was um, Paul O'Mary, and he just had a sterling career with the military. Jack Rubley and Sam Hyde, all three of these men were born in 1927, went to school together, were friends. I believe um, Jack Rubley had moved on to Jasper, went to Jasper, you know, high school, Walker County High School. Um, Paul and Sam went to Carbon Hill High School. And we have more great pictures of, um, of Jack Rubley because of his position. He was in charge of White House communications under Eisenhower, Kennedy, and Johnson. And so here he's depicted with uh, Kennedy in the Oval Office, I believe, and it was the first time a president talked on satellite radio. Um, this is him in the Oval Office, and, um, and Jack pointed out that that famous coconut was made, uh, you know, for a display on uh, Jack Kennedy's desk. And here he is. Um, there was a movie, uh, Frederick March, uh, Kirk Douglas, they were in a movie film, Seven Days in May. And Lieutenant Rubley is standing to March's right, and uh, members 
of the White House, the advance team, Colonel Rubley, was one of the technical advisors for this movie in 1962. And because of Jack's position, then we have these wonderful, wonderful photos that are just a treasure for a museum to have a hometown boy to be able to display like this. It's wonderful. And uh, here is Jack Rubley um, with um, President Johnson. They had just launched a ship in New Orleans by remote control. So all of these, and, and here is Eisenhower. Eisenhower and Kennedy in Palm Desert, California, in 1963. And I think Jack said he thought that was the only uh, photo they had um, with Eisenhower and Kennedy together. So a real treasure there. One interesting thing about Colonel Rubley, our own Jack Rubley, was in Dallas on that fateful day that John F. Kennedy was shot. He was in the car behind. He heard the shots over his head from the school repository building, and he said he knew, he knew shots were fired. And, um, and he was there when uh, John F. Kennedy was shot. Um, here is Jack Rubley, and this was 1961, Larry? Yeah. This is 1961, and this is the Alabama football team uh, after their national championship. And here is Bear Bryant, and you can imagine uh, Jack Rubley was especially proud of this, and I always protected this picture when I had it copied, and then um, it showed up on the Internet, but they had cut off. Jack Rubley, they just had the president and the football team. But our own, Nauvoo's own hometown boy, Jack Rubley, uh, you can imagine how excited he was to meet Bear Bryant and to be able to um, entertain that football team. Uh, Waldorf, Waldorf Astoria, New York City, 1961. Bernie Rubley is a uh, native a parish, Alabama. And here is a White House ball of Bernice Johnson Rubley, a Walker County native from Parish, danced with President 